hello and welcome to another week of Sambo iRacing. It's week four, season two, 2024. We are in the form of the uh, Okiyama International Circuit for their full course layout. We all know this is a great circuit. We all know it's a great layout. It's got the technical bits. It's got places where you can pass. It should make for another great week of racing. Those eagle-eyed viewers and returning viewers of mine uh, may have noticed that I have a new livery on this week. So I've not checked with the uh, subscriber that made it for me, but I shall do. And I shall mention their name uh, if they're happy for me to do so. But uh, it's inspired by the target theme as we target lap times with the uh, purple stripes representing purple sectors. So big thank you to that user. And uh, hopefully I look forward to uh, announcing who they were and uh, racing in it for the uh, remainder of the season. Anyway, if you are new to the channel, thanks for joining me. Please like and subscribe. Let the algorithms find me. Let me uh, try and show my laps to more people. What we do is we do a lap where I slow it down. I'll show you my braking markers, my uh, throttle markers, everything like that. And then I run it through at full speed from the chase cam. So you can see my telemetry trace uh, far better and uh, also see where my wheels are. Let me jump back in the cockpit for a final time with the driving line on. Without further ado, thanks for joining me and let's... Okay, so just before we start, I want to mention a few things. So, the uh, weather widget that I have from Race Labs, they did update, as I said they would do after last week, so they listened to the feedback. So now when the arrow points towards the car, that means that the wind is coming into uh, the front of the car, into my face. So it's now exactly as you would expect it to do. I know that did confuse a couple of people last week in the comments. Uh, the second thing is I ran, uh, I think, half a dozen laps. I'll stick them up on the uh, screen now as I'm talking. This is from Garage 61. So this is practice laps, non-race laps with a fixed setup from the season so far. So there have been quite a few laps run. I ran six of them. So I'm at the top of the board here. Uh, a couple of things to note. First of all, it's a cooler track, so it's a faster track. So my, my lap times... Um, are my record laps. Second thing is, whilst I ran half a dozen of them, I ran them and uh, I kept loading up into different sort of sessions so that I could experience different winds because obviously the Tempest system is live now, so it does change that. Um, all of my fastest laps, three or four of them, were all of a very similar standard. Um, it just meant that in some sectors I was faster, in some I was slower. So obviously we're doing a full 360 degrees here. So when you have the wind, you know, at your back in certain places, it means it's going to be in your face, other ones. But as we're doing the full 360 degrees, um, then it kind of evens out. Now this is the fastest lap that I had um, over the, the, you know, the, the period that I was testing, but they were all within, you know, a tenth of each other anyway. So just be aware of that. So if you are following my B-Lap from the description, um, you may note that on the straight you may be faster or slower, and conversely on other straights you may be faster or slower, and that, that's just because the temper system is live now. Anyway, enough of that. Let's start the lap. So we're over on the left-hand side. We're in fourth gear. We go over the start-finish line, and what we're looking for is that blue cone, as always, on the right-hand side. Now, you will note that according to the weather, the wind is in my face. So I know I can break quite late. For me, the marker at this stage, virtually the same as before. I start breaking just as I go past the white line. So the blue cone on the right-hand side uh, correlates with the white line directly in front of me here. So this is where you're going to break. You don't have to break that hard, only up to about 50%. Just you know, getting the weight over the front tires, reducing your speed slightly. I aim for the inside of the apex. I drop it down to third gear, and as I do that, I blip the throttle, and then I just continue to increase the throttle in third gear, so I'm at 100% at the apex. Car will drift out over to the left, get it back over to the right-hand side. This next turn here, turn two, we're just looking for a lift. So uh, once we go over to the right-hand side, we start moving back towards the left, aiming for the apex. Once we're just at the mouth of that access road on the right-hand side, what we're going to do is we're going to do a lift down to about 25%. And then we're going to slowly build back up on the throttle so that we're on the throttle nice and early because we're going to be on throttle now all the way through to turn four on throttle nice and early and hold that, getting plenty of curb on the left hand side. Your car will drift out wide. Don't go into the sand over on the right. Now we are changing up at 134 uh, kilometers an hour here for me. That's about 84, 85 miles an hour. Going into the wind, you may lose a bit of time if you're doing this into the wind and now what we're looking for so again we're going into the wind so normally 
I would break just before the 50 meter marker, but we are going into the wind, so it allows us to break that little bit um, later, a little bit harder. So just after I pass the 50 meter marker, I'm gonna break in a straight line up to about 76%, as you can see there. And as I start aiming towards the apex, gonna drop it down, trail break it off. I've started to increase uh, my throttle now, so I'm still in fourth gear, but I'm adding some maintenance throttle. And that also means when I drop it down to third gear at the apex just now, I'm not gonna have wheel lock on the rear wheels. So gonna build up the uh, throttle. So as you can see, really, really, really early, I'm on full throttle in third gear. And that just allows me to power through the rest of this corner here. I hold it over to the right hand side. It's the way I always prefer to do it. Some people do prefer to go over onto the left hand side. It evens out in the end, but this is uh, my driving style. It's the only one that I can teach, I'm afraid. Keeping it in fourth, I've got the wind behind me on this straight. Now, because I've got the wind behind me, I'm actually going to break probably about 10 meters earlier than I normally would. So normally for me, it's the 50 meter marker that I start breaking. But as you'll see, I'm actually using the Marshall post here. So just as I get to the Marshall post, so it's, you know, it's still on the screen and I'm starting to enter the break. So as I do that, come off the throttle, go 100%, what is it? Oh, it feels like 100%, so it's actually only about 84%. For those asking the question, I am four clicks back from baseline. So baseline 67.3, I'm four clicks back from that uh, towards the rear. That's the way I like it. It does make it slightly more tail happy, but I do prefer that for the extra braking power that you can get. So I break in a straight line. I'm aiming not quite for the apex, but I'm aiming for mid-track as I start that, as I start my straight line. I'm going to trail it off nicely down to uh, the apex here. And what you're about to see is I'm about to drop it to third and then to second. Now, usually when I'm doing these laps, I only drop it down to third. However, the fastest way is to drop it down to second because you really are slowing down here. Um, so I'm actually showing you what I do in races rather than telling you to do one thing and then me doing something else. If you don't feel comfortable or when you are practicing, you do lock up the rears and you spin around dropping it to second, then just drop it to third. You, you're only going to be a couple of hundred slower anyway, but this is the way I do it. So um, I'm trail breaking all the way down to the apex. As you can see, it's a really long trail breakdown. I'm blipping the throttle as I uh, change to third. And then I'm going to keep increasing the throttle, as you can see now, as I change to second gear. So I don't change to second gear without nearly a third uh, of the uh, full force of the throttle on there. That just gives you that extra um, your sort of strength of being able to get out the corner, gives you the extra torque. Straight back up to third, over to the right hand side. And now we're gonna start moving back over towards the apex. I'm gonna start lifting. Now, as you see, you're just sort of feeling for the grip. Anytime you need extra rotation, you just lift that little bit further, but I never go down to zero. As soon as I know, I'm going to start making the um, corner, getting full back on the throttle again. You can go really off track over on the right-hand side here, as long as your left-hand wheels remain on the racetrack. And again, as we look for this next turn into turn seven, just as we get to the rumble strip, I'm going to start doing a lift. And again, just feeling for where the grip is making sure that you take a, f a, a lot of um, um, curbing on the left-hand side, taking a little bit of grass as well. But the main thing is getting back on the throttle nice and early. It'll drift out to the right-hand side, so absolutely fine where my wheels are there. Now we're looking for the 50-meter marker. So again, um, we're looking for the 50-meter marker. The braking marker is actually just slightly after. If you look on the right-hand side where there's the railings, if you see there's sort of thin ones and then there's a thick one, it's just by the thick one that I'm actually going to start braking. So just as that di disappears off screen, you'll see that I break up to, what, what's that? Oh, really quite hard, nearly up to 90%. Again, going in a straight line, aiming for somewhere middle of the track. And I'm going to trail that off down to the apex keeping a bit of maintenance throttle on. I have a little bit of um, oversteer there, so I'll just correct that. You'll see it more uh, on the uh, third lap that I show you. And I'm really gonna blip the throttle as I drop it down to second gear. So again, this is another one where if you don't feel confident in second gear, you can leave it in third. I like second gear, again, just because it gives you that extra torque out the corner. Up to third, get over to the left-hand side, and then just before the Fanatec disappears off screen on the left-hand side here, 
I'm going to just blip the brake. I'm not actually looking to slow the car. All I'm looking to do is change the weight balance. So as soon as you put a little bit of um, brake on, it just puts the weight over the front wheels. That allows you to get the turn in. And now I'm just balancing the car between a tiny bit of brake and throttle, a bit of maintenance throttle. And once I know I'm going to make it through the corner, I'm on the uh, throttle nice and early, letting it drive out of there. Leaving it in third, fully revving it out. Now, it used to be that you couldn't go over this curbing because if you got it wrong, it would bounce you up and down. But the 3D model has really calmed that somewhat. Now, if your wheel is any further to the right of mine, so if it's over the yellow, you are going to get a slowdown here. So make sure that you are just inside the yellow or outside of it, depending on your point of view. I'm going to leave it in third gear. And what we're looking for here is the end of the uh, green sort of asphalt on the left-hand side. Just as we get to that, uh, or just past that, um, we're going to break very briefly up to about 35-40%. We're going to trail that off nice and early. I'm keeping the maintenance throttle on here in third gear, just looking to get the turn in. And then again, once I know I'm going to make it through, I'm fully back up to 100% throttle. And over and across the line, eventually, you know, 149.228. So make sure you park up nice and safely and uh, then relax for the rest of your day. So now we'll run through again from the chase cam at full speed. Okay, now for the full speed run through and where this is handy is looking at the uh, telemetry data for the trail braking and looking at whereabouts my wheels are on the track. So over to the left hand side, looking for the white line across the road, half brake, trail it off nice and easy, fully back on the throttle. Over to the right hand side, as we get to the access road, releasing it, getting back on. Changing it up to fourth, keeping it as straight as possible here, not actually touching the grass, we're getting close to it, looking for the uh, 50 meter marker just after it, trail braking off, down to third, keeping it over to the right hand side. Now, sometimes when I'm in public lobbies and I'm behind people that are sort of 800 I rating, I see them weaving left and right and left and right on the straight. Do try and keep your wheel as straight as possible. Goes without saying. Marshall's post on the left here. Brake hard, trail it off nice and slowly. Down to third, down to second. You can just leave that in third, no problem whatsoever. Big lift here, build back up. So just after the 50 meter marker, the thick railing on the right, down to second, I had a little bit of correction there, it didn't actually cost me too much in terms of time. Just a really light break around that corner as you can see on the telemetry. Flat out through here, don't cross the uh, yellow line, little break, trail it off, back on the uh, accelerator. Wide exit without going into the gravel. And I can tell you, in these conditions, that will be competitive every single race this week. Final time from the cockpit with the uh, driving line back on. Okay, time for a final run through. I'm going to turn the uh, tire noise up and be quiet.
little overcorrection there. Or a little correction. As we come to the end, I just want to thank you guys once again for staying with me throughout my video. I'm over 1,300 subscribers. I am absolutely flabbergasted by that. I thank you all, each and every one of you, for your support. Um, I'm, I'm so, so pleased, so happy, so grateful. So thanks very much. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the week. I've been Sambo Racing. Thanks.